Okay, so guys, I am introducing everyone here today and obviously you're here to see the LG 2023 home entertainment range. So first of all, thank you so much for coming. We do appreciate people making the time and coming to see this in person, not just getting a press release emailed to them. Hopefully you'll get out of a lot of value out of the presentations today. Um, it's important to us and you can tell that by the number of people from LG who are here today to present to you. So I'm Tony Brown, the Home Entertainment Marketing Manager, as I think most of you know. We also have Gemma Mew, who is our Marketing Director at LG Australia. So she's going to explain a little bit about what we've been doing uh, in the brand space for LG over the last 12 months, some really exciting news there. Josh Marshall, who is our General Manager of Home Entertainment Sales. Mm -hmm. So Josh is going to talk to you about the retail market, give you some insights as to what's happening out there. It's a very dynamic, changing place. Um, and you guys know Thomas, he's probably preparing a demo and making it even better to show you in a couple of minutes. So he's our uh, tech presenter extraordinaire and he'll be the, the primary person taking you through the room. And a new person you may not have seen present before is Natalie Fideli. So Natalie works with me in home entertainment marketing um, and she's the audio category manager. So she's going to give you a great overview of our soundbar range um, midway through the presentation. And also we have another person from LG here at the moment, Murray Richardson, who is our CE sales director as well. So Murray's popped in to see what we've been doing here all day, not just watching TV Murray, we are <laughs> doing some stuff. Um, good TVs. <laughs> yeah, they are good TVs. Um, and so guys, jokes aside, 2023 really important for LG globally, um, but particularly in Australia, because we're celebrating 10 years of bringing OLED TV to the world and 10 years of OLED leadership. So we're gonna to talk to you a little bit more about that after some presentations, but we're celebrating, hence the balloons here, uh, this occasion, and hopefully you'll see that uh, transition of leadership and innovation over the years flow through in our 2023 range. So I'll hand over to Gemma Lemieux to talk to you about brand. Hello everyone and welcome. Thanks, Tony. Um, many of you may have seen our global brand vision unveiled at CES earlier this year, Innovation for a Better Life, which really emphasises our uh, authentic life is, life's good um, brand, which was developed here in Australia many years ago. And just last week, we launched our new brand identity, which I think is a really fresh take on life is, life's good as well, um, and really brings to life our core philosophies, um, our core brand philosophies around human-centric innovation, um, creating amazing customer experiences and warmth to generate a smile as well, which I think are very true and very genuinely LG. You'll start to see this manifest here in Australia in a number of ways. Um, one kind of core rain, what one core way is our incredible products which um, provide innovative experiences as well for, for our consumers, um, as well as um, a number of um, environmental and community programs which we will also be continuing this year. I mean it's very near and dear to our heart here at LG as well, so we'll continue those programs. You'll also start to see some of our um, large campaigns really focusing on some of the younger Australian generations, which are very important for us as a brand moving forward um, as they represent the future. So we're very keen to connect with, with the younger, younger Australian generations as well. And as I mentioned, um, environment and community are, are very, very important to us and we're very proud of um, our commitment um, to both. Over the past number of years, we've donated $1.9 million to environmental causes and also people that are doing it tough in the, doing it tough in the community as well. Um, we've provided these funds to um, programs such as the New South Wales um, Bushfire and Flood Recovery Program, as well as things like WIRES and Good360, important for us as well. Our LG Local Legends Program really um, focuses on rewarding those doing great things in the community. And over the past um, three years, since 2020, we have rewarded 44 individuals from 778 nominations. We've told 290 stories and connected with 25 million Aussies um, through our marketing and PR activities, which we think is really impressive and we're very proud of that as well. Um, one of the partnerships that we, we developed um, last year was our, our partnership with Ronald McDonald House where we really focused on um, providing 
good equipment and good solutions for them as well to just make their lives and the lives of children a little bit easier as well. We donated $260,000 for an upgrade to their home appliance, home entertainment and air conditioning solutions across Australia which um, really made a big difference um, to, to the houses where children stay or their, and their families stay. And in 2023, um, we will be really focusing on accessibility of education. One of, our fan, one of our CEO's big pushes this year is around accessibility of solution and um, providing accessible products. And our take on this is allowing and providing accessible education solutions to, to children who, whilst they're, whilst they're receiving treatment, they'll be able to still connect with their families, which we think is really, really important, and also continue their education, because we know that many of them are unable to do so whilst they're receiving treatment and often have to repeat years. So we feel this is a really lovely way of us providing our incredible um, solutions um, to really improve their lives. So as you can see, we've got a lot of activities happening. 2023 is bigger than ever before. And I'm really personally excited to be part of um, LG this year and I'm looking forward to the year ahead. But I'll hand over to Josh, who's gonna to talk to you a little bit more about some of the sales trends coming through in 2023. Great, thanks Juma. Uh, great to see you again for those who I've, I've met before. Um, I'm in a fortunate position to be able to kind of share some sales results and what has been over the last couple of years. And you know, as, um, as we all probably understand, the TV market has been quite buoyant. And you know, for us at the moment, we're seeing the trends really gravitate to you know, that premium space, and in particular OLED of courses, which is where we focus a lot of our business on. And, 22 is certainly no different from uh, from that. So, you know, we just sort of look back at history over the last couple of years, and you know, it was only 2021 we saw OLED grow 85% versus the previous year, another 25% last year. So, you know, a substantial component of the business, and essentially one out of every five dollars spent on a CV over the last 12 months was was on an OLED panel. So, we're quite excited about that. Um, you know, when we look at 23 and how that transitions, is there's a couple of key uh, areas when we look at the ranging. Um, and it's really around those trends continuing. There's no secret that, you know, at the start of this year that the economic uh, climate is a little bit tougher, but there still is some gravitation towards premium space. So we're quite excited to build on those trends and build a range this year that kind of focuses on those in particular. So we're excited to release 33 TVs here today across OLED, QNED and our UHD technologies, uh, providing obviously more products uh, for everybody in their homes. In 23, um, as I mentioned, we're excited about the range and we've been working really closely with the retail partners around what that looks like in their stores. In particular, they were certainly hit a little bit harder in that bricks and mortar environment over the last couple of years. They've, they've definitely bounced back, um, but it's important for us to kind of focus on what that means as an experience in the stores. So we're working quite closely with them on building strong ranges and also that experience in store meaning displays, regardless of the form factor, whether it's you know some of the lifestyle products, the big screens, um, or only uh, gaming concepts. So lots of focus as we, we head into this year. Uh, when we talk about um, the insights heading into this year, retail is also really excited about OLED as a proposition. So there is you know a strength in that category this year, and we really are forecasting that the category itself is going to grow even further up to potentially 30% of the market this year. So it's even 50% growth on what we've seen in 2022. So lots of excitement for, there for us. And of course, with LG being the biggest uh, brand in OLED, the most options right across, again, multiple form factors, uh, we feel we're, we're right in a good position to, uh, to take advantage of that market. So there's lots of new product for us to go through with you today that, um, that Tommy will take you a bit of a, a journey with. But before we jump into, I'll draw your attention to the screens here. We've got a little bit of special contact we've created uh, to highlight 10 years of OLED this year. This year, LG celebrates a decade as the world's number one OLED TV brand. LG OLED has been entertaining Australians since 2013. This year we celebrate 10 years of world firsts. Life is all about the experiences that technology helps to share. How we watch TV has evolved and LG OLED has pioneered bigger, better, brighter Josh, thank you so much for taking us through what's happening at LG Australia and in the retail market. 
And as you've just seen from this video, we've been around, a reminder, we've been around for 10 years in this OLED space innovating. And really for us, it is showing you what we can do next. But before we go there and kick off this tour, I'll talk to you about where we've been so far. So I don't know if any of you guys remember, but in 2013, we launched the first OLED TV around the world, including Australia. It was 55 inches, it was curved back then, and it was a full HD in terms of definition. So thankfully for us, we've added 4K, we've added 8K, we've added HDR capabilities, we've made processes specially designed to bring out the best in OLED. We've even made it roll out of a box and showed that to you a couple of times at CES as well, just to show you what innovation and technology we can bring. So I think the last couple of years though, I've seen significant steps forward, mainly around the OLED Evo panels, where we've pushed the processors, the algorithms, the panels, heat sinks, all the technical stuff that Thomas is gonna to explain to you to the very limits. And we're really excited to show you the G3 model today, which is a roughly about 70% brighter than our base level OLED B series. So that's coming up in the show. Um, but really the point of this is to show that LG, particularly in the OLED space, is pushing the limits of innovation. And we're bringing that because people's experiences and expectations are changing. So you've just seen there a whole lot of content playing from Australia. 10 years ago, people were still watching free to air and probably watching DVDs and Blu-rays. That's not the case today. Lots of subscription services, lots of content. It's when you want it, that's when people are consuming content. And we're gonna show you how the picture quality and the um, technology in the picture has gotten a lot better. We're gonna show you even more ranges of design on the outside of the TV that we're bringing. And we're gonna show you improvements to the uh, user interface and the WebOS system that we get a lot of accolades around the world for. So we're gonna show that to you in UHD, uh, QNED, and uh, OLED, uh, mainly OLED. And there's a little um, world's first, just quietly sitting at the end of the end of the room there in the 90 cent, which beautifully came up with the 10 year logo just as I pointed to it for the first time. So see how that was synchronized? But now I'm gonna hand over to Thomas Baker who's gonna start with our Q&E here today. Hello everybody, welcome, welcome. Howdy Alex. Hey. Hey to your fans. Um, <laughs> um, come on in, guys. Uh, we're going to look at QNED, and the sweet spot is exactly where Joe is, actually. So, well done. Right in the middle. Um, now, QNED is in the middle of our range. So, there's actually a lot of customers who are still buying 4K entry spec um, TVs, which, you know, obviously give you sharp picture, smart TV, but in terms of extracting the performance of of the picture quality, yeah, they're a bit lacking. So QNE exists to um, offer customers the ability to extract that extra color and brightness um, that's available in content. So the QNE layer is purifying and causing the colors to be accurate as they're passing through the screen. So when you're putting up beautiful content like this, you see content with more realism and pop. And when you're getting bigger and bigger screens, like these ones, we go up to 86 inch, you need that brightness, bold colors, and great blacks. Now, that is the uh, QNED 81 series, and if you move up to the QNED 86, this is a um, top of the line QNED model. Now, if you want great blacks, you <laughs> need to get a TV with smaller and smaller dimming zones. And that's where you get the mini LED performance. With smaller LEDs and more zones, you can um, drop in and do the blacks in more localized zones and then crank them up for really bright colors uh, elsewhere in the picture. And the result on this QNET 86 is beautiful picture quality that's gonna step um, up. Your picture quality is great for movies, sports, gaming, it's got it all. But yeah, we're gonna move across to the lifestyle models now. So follow me around. How are ya? Good to see some uh, industry veterans. You probably were here 10 years ago when we looked at these OLEDs for the first time. Uh, I'm pretty excited about um, this one here. This is the Stand By Me model. And uh, the Stand By Me is brand new smart screen. And it's, it does a few things really well. And I think it deserves a place in more Australian homes. So who here has to share a TV with other people in the house? Yeah, yeah. You don't always get to choose what's on the main screen. Sometimes you've got to watch it anyway, but if you want to continue watching your entertainment and not be restrained to a little smartphone, uh, the Standby Me is the ultimate second screen. So 
you can take your entertainment from room to room, to a bedroom, retreat. If you're gonna chill out in the bath, hey, take the stand by me because in the base of the screen is wheels and it's rollable and you can take it from room to room. And you'll notice that there is no um, power connection because I'm running it off the built-in battery. That's pretty cool. So this, this screen gives me up to four hours of viewing, um, which is plenty enough for a movie, a couple of TV show episodes here. And um, if you do forget your remote control, you can actually use this product from the touch screen, which means you can fire up your favorite TV shows, and enjoy your content. It's a full HD, HDR screen. It looks beautiful, bright, and it's got built-in speakers. Yeah. Is that WebOS? It is running WebOS, yeah. yeah. It's a WebOS tablet on wheels. Yeah. It is, yeah. Yep, it's the WebOS, but it can also run in the portrait orientation too. And I actually think WebOS touchscreen is a really cool okay, cute. function. Yeah, it sure is a great product. now. Because of that built-in battery, you don't even have to be limited to the rooms inside your house. You can take this out to the balcony, the patio, and enjoy your entertainment. Imagine cooking a barbie, put the footy on, keep going, talk about an upgrade. Now, a lot of people have been telling me, you know, the applications for this product are endless. You know, A lot of people don't like a TV in the bedroom um, because it's distracting and personal, but you know, we could all handle a, a TV in a master bedroom for a couple of hours and then when you're done, take it away again. So you've got that um, beautiful um, sanctimonious environment, but you also got the entertainment you need um, at your fingertips. So that's the Stand By Me. Now it's not just for entertainment. Everything these days has to also play ball with our smartphones and tablets. So here I, I'm gonna fire up the iPad into mirroring. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure can. Flip it around. Thank you. Thomas is a beautiful system. There we go. Okay, so now I've got my portrait orientation. And you can probably guess what app I'm going to fire up now. It's not Instagram, TikTok. Right, you can get your TikTok. Which, side note, is now available. Certainly is. Yep. So yeah, you can jump in Instagram, TikTok. You can look at your emails, um, whatever you want. The screen mirroring is super, super practical. I'm gonna get out of TikTok before something happens at PR disaster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, come on, you're under embargo for at least another half hour, and you've done that's plenty of time. Can you yeah, use yeah, the yeah. native TikTok app on there, and can I scroll it if I wanted to? Uh, yes, you could. Yeah, great. Yeah, you could. There is um, the. This is the Smart TV WebOS from last year. Yeah. Uh, but using the Alpha 7 processor, um, yeah, it runs all those apps really smoothly. How much does the whole thing weigh? Uh, I think it's about 15 kilos. So it wouldn't fit on a Roomba the same size and you couldn't move it around <laughs> Like a follow me. Upgrade you can try Roomba. and send us the video. Cool, great. Yeah, awesome. The portable, portable screen. Can't wait to, to impress the Roomba PR by breaking it by putting it on top of it. We'll see you on TikTok. Well, the next model just will just have an LG vacuum cleaner at the bottom of it. There you go. <laughs> The stand by me, by me. Someone write that down. It's now called the back by me, but yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The back by me. All right, now the, uh, the last thing is um, this product is able to accommodate a smart device on the clip here. So we're gonna fire up the mirroring one more time. I'm just gonna simulate this with a camera. So I'm gonna switch to selfie mode, there we go. Clip the attachment on, and now I can do my Zoom call. Um, you just have to have my selfie. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. So we can have our video call. Obviously, I recommend earbuds for this particular demo, but you can obviously you tablet your phone, do video calls. So practical, right? This thing is is great for musicians, um, people who have lots of interactive hobbies. You know, it's the ultimate solution um, product, and I'm. Pretty excited. I think it's going to have a great place in a lot of homes. Is, is there a browser in the WebOS interface? There is. Yeah. Is there an app store? There is. What's the sound like? Oh, look, it's conveniently a retap button. <laughs> nice. Did you capture that? Yeah. Our leading retap button. What's the sound like on it, though? 
because it doesn't look like it's got a lot of room for speakers in there. Uh, it actually goes reasonably loud, I'll yeah. be honest. Yeah, surprisingly. So you got your, your menus, you can bring that up here. Someone's requested. Ha having said that, I reckon a lot of people will be connecting to this. I'm sure. I'm just curious, because if you were moving it in between your, your, your bedroom and whatnot, I'm curious. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I, I must admit I haven't heard this thing. Thomas has had it in his house for weeks. <laughs> he moves it between the bedroom and the bathroom. It's all good. Yeah. It's got a lot of testing. I don't know. If it's connected to the internet. Yeah, I think it's like, it's not to be viewed meters and meters. Sure. Away. It's a personal device. Um, and it actually sounds pretty rich. I think I was trying to work out where it was, where it was a display on wheels or a TV on wheels. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's whatever you need it to be. Um, Good and answer. I'm looking forward to seeing how people use it. In yeah, what, what do you guys think? What's the reaction? I oh, want it. Looks very cool. The, how much is it, and yeah. will the um, Web OS be updatable? Because you mentioned it was last year's not him, version. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. You guys hand it over. We stand together for so a reason. So I can answer the first one. The price is one triple nine, coming in July to Australia. Uh, so very soon, but just under two thousand dollars as launch. Um, is the Web OS upgradable? Our policy so far is that for each new range of TVs we launch, we launch the latest and greatest WebOS. As I've said before, we do a very good job of going and upgrading apps, and there's another demonstration that Thomas will show you that um, upgrades a feature in previous models, but the WebOS system doesn't go back at the moment. Mm -hmm. Things change every day in this industry, in this company. We may be presenting to you in the second half about how WebOS is going to roll back, but at the moment, the operating system is unique to the year models, but the apps and the content and features, we do tend to upgrade. You, you said it's four hours of battery life, but how long does it take to charge? Uh, say 3,500 milliamp battery, so just under two hours. What technology is the screen running on? Full uh, it's HD. LED, full HD, 27 inch. Right. That's LED backlit as opposed to just standard LCD, or? Yeah, LED backlit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not 4K because then it would drain the battery cool. really fast. Well, but it's not OLED because that would actually preserve the battery even more. Well, it's not OLED yet. Oh, I see, right. Because that's what that, that 1999 price point feels better if it's OLED, that's why I'm confused. It's not OLED yeah. Right, gotcha. Yeah. And and now that you have this portable version on wheels, might you ever make a smaller handheld version, like a tablet? They got out of phones a couple of years ago. I know, I know. <laughs> Weber, West, Weber West started as a tablet it did so, operating yes. system. Did you still have one? No. I think we make very good TVs. Yes, yes. I mean, that was just a trick question. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no, I mean, it's, it is a demonstration, again, of innovation. Launched already in Asia, markets proving very popular, and I think it's going to be a, a knockout in Australia, to be honest, for yeah. um, a number of reasons. Well, all you need now is the... The autonomous version that follows you around. Yeah. I, I believe it's called yep. the back. The, the, the backbone. Yeah, the backbone. yeah, yeah. Well, the one, the remote control version from your phone. You know, it's just got the little. You could call it moving moments. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We found a new agency. I know. <laughs> all you have to do is wait for Jono to arrive and get all your classy slogans <laughs> and the very yeah. unclassy ones. So, well. so why is it stand by me without the D? Is that just for uh, copyright purposes? Or that's a very good question that I've asked in depth. Team. Yeah, because it sounds like you've got to deal with Stan when, was, when yeah. you probably don't. But anyway, all good. We just wanted to be different. Yes, yes. Well, I know. But, uh, yeah. So Stan, oh, yeah. not Stan. Yeah, I, yeah it doesn't force you to listen to the song when you turn on. So it's already in my head. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other thing is the internet. That, you know, when you stand something, you understand it. So that's. Okay. Understandable. Uh, I like to hear adding to my right marketing yep. ideas. <laughs> but wait, guys, there's a lot more. Yeah, we, absolutely. We better move on, otherwise we'll be here all night. <laughs> Perfect. Now, you might have seen this at last year's launch event, and that's fine, but we only just launched into stores at the very end of last year. So this is the easel, and it is designed to portray an artwork on an easel stand, hence the beautiful leaning design here. Now, when we're going to fire it up, you'll be able to admire the metal frame um, around the edge, the premium fabric finish from a Denmark fabric company called Kabadra. And uh, as it goes down, 
you will get to hear the beautiful theme song that alludes to your entertainment about to begin. At least it's not another variation of doodum. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we can actually um, see the screen in full. There's actually a sound bar concealed behind this panel. Um, it's actually hollow, where that sound bar outputs the sound. But as we're looking at these beautiful, gorgeous, and they truly are gorgeous artworks here, built into the TV, you can start to appreciate the detail in the panel and all the subtle brush strokes and the contrast between the colors. And that's because this is an OLED panel, which means it looks great off and on. And you know, with all those 8 million pixels delivering best in class color and black. So you know that when it comes time for movies or sport, it's going to deliver. Now there's a whole range of artworks built into the art gallery down here. And there's a moving artworks, there's static pictures, there's animations. And you can download more from um, a couple of apps inside the TV. I love this one to show all the fine brush strokes that are illustrated with the 8 million pixels there. It's a truly great TV. And when you are done, the last thing you want to do is, is turn this beautiful TV furniture back into a black rectangle. So when we activate the cover again, the TV will now be entering line mode. And that's going to display clock weather, um, a nice background artwork, or you can use it to play your music content. Okay, so that's currently in the cream color, but if you change the panel, you can match it with green um, to match the UX or a maroon color. And uh, my favorite thing is obviously with an 80 watt sound system, it's actually pretty beefy. You know, you want to use it for your music playback as well. So you can airplay your music across the TV um, or Chromecast your audio to the TV from your favorite app. Enjoy the TV sound system without everything on and taking up all that presence in your room. That's the easel. Yeah. Do you have any agreements with, like, say, galleries around the world for different? I saw some Korean stuff there, obviously. But are there any agreements with, like, say, Lionel or things like that? Uh, I know there is. Um, there was a, a Polestar. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. I saw, um, I saw that. But there's a, probably the number one one is called Black Dove. Okay. And they have I mean, thousands. I mean, more art galleries for no doubt. Yeah, so Black Dove cool. is like a subscription service, about fifteen a month, okay, fifteen bucks a month, and it has you know, all the classics. Okay. There. There's even YouTube reels with hundreds of paintings that you can just play on. Okay. Is the only way to play music when it's in line mode through casting? You can't do it natively through the TV. You can. You yeah. can. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. USB or casting. I mean, any TV, modern TV, can do that, right? Yeah, you so, can. Yeah. But not every TV has the no. eighty watt soundbar built in. It is different. And I think the key role of this TV, although it's got a great 65 inch OLED screen, it's actually to look good when it's turned off, you know, because everybody these days wants to really put effort into their home design, the decor, premium. A lot of designers don't like the big black box there in the middle of the lounge room. I think most of the time, actually, the screen's going to be turned off just with that black there. And the rest of it does. I mean, we've carefully designed it to blend in here, but it, it, it is actually quite an appealing fabric. Um, and as Thomas said, in a range of colours coming. So it's about looking good when it's turned off and having a great OLED screen when it's turned on. I have two questions regarding a design. I mean, you, you can usually clean fabrics like this, so can the panel come off and be cleaned? The fabric is glued so to the, the panel. No, okay. Well, you can clean it as you couldn't put it in a wash. If someone machine. accidentally throws wine, it's a perfect example, which may or may not happen at a dinner party. Look, if it's a permanent stain, you're probably in your best interest to, to order a replacement panel. Call us in the front of you. Right. Does it have to be leaned against something? Can you mount the design like this? You can. Flat on the wall. Yeah. 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 There's, there's two options, really, and there's a, a, a substantial bracket we're not using today under there that just keeps it secure, even though it's quite solid. It's designed to be displayed at five degrees. Yeah, it's a five degree angle, or it can fit flush against the wall, yeah. still hanging on that bracket. And Thomas, you're saying you can mount it up off the ground with that bracket? Yeah, yeah, it's a very robust bracket. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone asks me, so what happens if my cat is crossing right when the bat is coming down? <laughs> Don't worry, cats have nine lives. No, um, you'll be fine when it detects. There's um, plenty of fabric there to recoat the cat. <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> 
when it detects pressure, it will just retract again. So no toddlers or cats are going to be, or dogs are going to be harmed. Exactly. In the making of this video. Awesome. Okay, we'll keep moving. And yep. while you're on your way over, I want you to have a look at the Jose from the back. Um, please do have a close look. Um, this we didn't show last year, so this is the first time. You guys are a long way back. Is this like some future reference I'm not getting? Do you, do you mind muting that one too? Sure. They're remote. They're remote. Buy a TV, so magazines. This is new for me. <laughs> okay. Now the pose is bringing Sorry, can smaller. You can you spell that quickly? P O S E with a little. Oh, cool! Plastic. It's actually known as yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's French, so it must be cool. Oh, yeah, it must be cool. very fancy. Hmm. So the OLED panel in here is dressed up to bring a TV that will suit fancy homes, homes you know, like apartments where everything's open plan, and we know in that type of environment. This TV is definitely not designed to be against the wall. It's designed to be in the within your furniture and to really uh, make an impression. And so that um, fact, we've made the back of the TV just as attractive as the front. And we've got here the accessory shelves where you can um, put you know your favourite books or records or um, photo albums. Maybe if your kid got a good report card, you could tuck that in as well um it's also got the fabric cover on the back that you could pin on you know a couple of photos that you'd like um and that's all accessible you can see at the back and that's actually a really important design element of this product behind here is a lot of cable channels so you can run those hdmis usbs without them being visible because in the end all you want is your tv to look as clean and minimalist as you can and we've made it as easy as we can so can you open it up and and rewind things. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. I love that. It comes off right here. Sure. Absolutely. Is the version for Latin America going to be called the Jose? I thought that's what they that's said. That's what I thought they said too. I'm going to When they said Jose, I was like, what? Jose, what? Yeah, <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you the fake look for that. Jose. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay, so um, you've got channels for your cables. And you're probably thinking, why? Why would I need that? Well, you know, if you've got a Fox box, an Xbox console, you know, laptop, um, you can run that directly down the leg as yeah, well cool. to minimize that ugly cable clutter and give you this a TV that just looks so clean and tidy. It's a great work of art. I think that. that's a really yeah, clever. Cool. That's really clever. And, uh, it's not for posers. It's for people who've got style. Oh, I'm sure that joke oh. hasn't been made four times today at all. <laughs> Uh, go, go again, go again. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, this range, I mean, Stand By Me is the portable element of this, but um, Easel, 12999 is the price. So obviously not for everyone, but it really is high-end design focused. Um, but Pose is coming in at uh, three and a half, just under three and a half. What's the size of the screen? And 55 inch. But they're both OLED Evo panels. So the very latest and best uh, OLED TV technology, but basically designed to look good when they're turned off in homes mm -hmm. and stuff so we're recognizing that so and it's nice to see the yeah yeah uh, creativity yeah not for everyone like, like we know but yeah we're pushing the boundaries there and we think it's an important element going forward and and again watch this space because we know there's uh, more personalization more design focused uh, products coming from Korea. I was going to say I like the fact that it's a functional lifestyle TV the two don't often connect it's normally a lifestyle TV to be lifestyle uh, yeah, I exactly. And, and, you know, we know that maybe people um, will divide a big room, maybe in an apartment between a lounge space and a dining table. And so this thing is, is looking good at the back. Um, and that's the point, right? That's kind of the marketing slogan. Looks good from the front or the back. Um, yeah, so just pushing the boundaries. Hmm. Nice. All right, well, please follow me, guys. We're going to have a look at another TV with a name, the Flex. And uh, as you can start to see by now, this is the wow wall where all these TVs have yes. wow features. Um, now this is a 42 inch OLED, 4K OLED. Um, and we know OLED's obviously fantastic for video games. You know, anyone who's serious about gaming is playing on an OLED screen now for the instant response. Um, you know, if you're not a gamer and you're gonna get into it, get an OLED. Now, when you're doing your desktop work, your Excels, your spreadsheets, you want a flat screen. It's, you want your pictures to look um, in proportions. But when it's time to uh, game, you, 
got the option with the flex to use the um, strong arms on the back of the screen to activate the curved function. I'm going to go from flat to fully curved now. And the screen is now curving to a radius of 900, which makes it actually very curvy for a 42 inch. And I'm not sure, it's been a while since we've been talking about curved screens, but when you're sitting about a meter away, which is the ideal viewing distance for a monitor, you want elements like your heads up display, you know, the sniper hiding up on the balcony in the corner. You want those parts of the game to be out of your peripheral vision and as close to the central vision as you can. So that's why having a curved screen will improve and, and reduce your um, eye strain, okay? Which is important when you are gaming, it's all about being able to react. And if you can see things and react faster, your chances of winning are greater. Now, the, the other benefits of this product is, you know, obviously you've got the adjustable height here. It's got the TV tuner built in, so it really is an all-in-one solution. Of course, you don't want to have your computer visible um, near your desk, so it's got the built-in USB hub, so you connect your, your PC's uh, mouse, keyboard, uh, webcam, you can do all that through the side of the TV. And it has a built-in microphone, so you can do your uh, live gaming and talk back um, to the game through the microphone behind the screen. It, it truly has it all, and it is the ultimate gamer's um, TV and monitor. And I think it's a truly special product, the Flex, and it's going to be hitting stores this year at 4999. Is the name a nod to the original phone? Which, which one? Yeah, the LG Flex phone. Um, it is now that we've said Great. that. Great, awesome. <laughs> totally going to work. Which is completely not true. Yeah. If you write that, uh, I don't know if anyone remember. That I is a good thing. I won one at an event that long ago. Did you? And I gave it some. Because uh, I already have it. That would have been priceless now. It, it would. <laughs> okay. Maybe, if you don't remember it, I'm not sure. Maybe in 10 minutes. I still have that. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right, now, yeah, the so Flex is, uh, is going to be our new segue into audio. So I'm going to introduce as you come over to Natalie, who will be talking about our new soundbars and how we're creating new ways to match soundbars with our TVs. Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying the tour so far. Um, so a key focus for LG in 2023 has been around how our soundbar products really complete the home entertainment setup. And so we're introducing a number of new features this year that allow our soundbars to be better integrated with our LG TVs from both an audio and a design perspective. So one of these new features is WOW Orchestra, which uses all channels from the TV and the soundbar at the same time so that they work like one speaker. And this creates an expanded soundstage with improved height, depth and power to really amplify the audio experience that you're getting. Another new feature is WOW Interface, which it makes it easier to manage your soundbar settings because it passes a lot of the soundbar controls onto the LG TV screen. So then you can do things like adjust the volume, check the connection status, and select your sound modes in an easier and more convenient way, and with the one LG TV remote as well. And Thomas will be demoing these two features for you shortly so you can see it in action. So another way we're better integrating our TVs with our soundbars is through design. So our flagship SC9 soundbar comes with an included bracket called the LG Synergy Bracket. And what it allows you to do, so as you can see here with our two C3 TVs, it allows you to mount the soundbar to the TV either by stand mounting or wall mounting the soundbar. And it positions the soundbar neatly under the TV and so those triple up firing speakers are not blocked by the TV while also making for quite a clean and seamless look as well. So aside from our SC9, we'll also launch three additional models this year. So firstly, our SE6 soundbar, which you may have seen it. It's on display just outside this room in the bar area. And it's a great soundbar for smaller living spaces like apartments because it has a quite a compact design. It does not have a subwoofer. And 
design is also a very important factor for this soundbar because it comes with softer rounded edges and fabric that wraps around the soundbar to make for quite the stylish look that complements any space. So another new model we're launching this year is our S77 soundbar and it's a mid-range soundbar but with 3.1.3 channel configuration. So what's great about this soundbar is it allows consumers to access that triple up firing speaker technology but at a more accessible price point. And then we'll also launch our SH7 soundbar, which is all about delivering loud and powerful sound. It comes with 800 watts of power and 5.1 channels, uh, as well as a 200 watt subwoofer to really punch out thrilling and immersive audio for your home. So aside from our new models, we're also continuing a number of our 2022 soundbars this year and the continuing models will be getting a software update as well to include the WOW Orchestra and WOW Interface functionality. So it's an exciting year for our soundbar category as we launch a number of new audio innovations that allow for that better integration and quite a diverse range of soundbar products to the market. So... Yeah. You said that um, continuing the previous models are going to get WOW Orchestra. How far back does that go on TV? So it's 2022 TV and soundbar. Right, okay. so, so if you have a 2021 TV, but it's going to be soundbar, it doesn't have to go to the Yeah, yeah, it will just be on our 2022 channel. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll pass it along to Thomas, who will take you through the SC9 demo right now. Awesome, okay. All right, I'm going to ask a quick question. Maybe Lee, maybe Luke, uh, if I said, out of, um, we sold 10 TVs. How many of those TVs do you think would actually have a soundbar sold with it? Most people don't buy soundbars. Most people don't buy a soundbar? 30% that's right. 30%? Oh, I <laughs> wish, you know, you'd be the perfect product manager. It's actually just 10%, um, which means as, as um, the C-Series is often the most popular TV uh, in Australia by value, you know, it'd be great to see more soundbars sold with them, <clears> but actually 10% is pretty low, and that means a lot of people are just relying on their TV speakers or maybe using an old system that doesn't have things like Atmos. Uh, so that's where the SC9 soundbar is very important. We know customers are buying this TV in droves and we're gonna start displaying the C-Series in store on this soundbar. It's called the SC9, that C is for C-Series and it's to go with the C2 and the C3 soundbar. And with the soundbar it includes a special bracket which allows it to be physically attached to the TV and the soundbar actually now becomes the stand for this TV. It can also be used when wall mounted, which you know a lot of people do. You've got the option to wall mount and that's going to stay with the TV when you rotate it. Now when we um, do connect LG TV and LG soundbar, we obviously want this to be able to do everything, right? And so we've added in a new feature called WOW Orchestra. And WOW Orchestra allows the TV to share the sound modes from the TV directly to the soundbar and also output the TV speakers and the soundbar at the same time. You might be saying, why would I want that? You know, but a lot of people are actually very disappointed when we tell them, once you connect the soundbar, your TV speakers are not using anymore. You don't need them. You don't need them. You've got a soundbar, but they want that. So we're giving customers what they want with WOW Orchestra. I'm going to play a scene from A Star Is Born, and you should be able to hear the difference that the triple up firing speakers are making in terms of amplifying the clarity in the singer's voice. So let's have a quick listen, and we'll go from here.
demo sound just to put a caveat to it it would sound even better with more walls closer in but yeah that that product um certainly sounds fantastic in a bad room sounds good for i am <laughs> Um, now that is, uh, you know, available with all the C-Series, including last year's C2 model. So we're expecting to move a lot of these SC9 sound bars. So I actually draw your attention over to... Oh, it's 14 triple nine. 14 triple nine. 15,000 dollars. Double nine. Okay. Yeah. I, I would have said the same actually. Yeah. One, Sorry, four, nine, nine. Cool. Yeah. Alrighty, <laughs> that's pretty bad actually. Now, when you are connecting your um, game console to LG OLEDs, you know you're going to get the best response time. What else? Blacks, colors. It's important, you know, LG OLEDs are often chosen as the preferred gaming TV because they do offer so much. And to make it even easier for customers, we do have the game. Hmm dashboard which lets you quickly get a glimpse of frame rate if your vr is on you can adjust the um, different picture modes you can see a live feed on your resolution you can tailor this to the information that you need when you want it so i know it's 4k but i want hdr gone as well i'd like to know my low latency mode is on and i'd like to access the input lag feature so there it goes i can tailor it to my to my game and not only that, if you go deeper into the game optimizer, you can find a picture mode to suit your preferred game. So role-playing games, of course, you know, it's all like the excitement and the, the what is around the corner. Um, sports games, obviously it's all about the beautiful colors and grass and you know, the uniforms there. Now the um, important thing is that when you are playing you want to maximize your detail and so that's actually set to the, the highest but this is a night race and night races can be a bit hard just like zombie games can be a bit hard to you know see and, and react so we give customers the opportunity to adjust things like the black stabilizer just to add a bit more detail in those dark scenes as well as if you are flash banged you know not in a racing game but in a, in a shooting game you can um, adjust the brightness of white areas as well so you've got that ability tweak to your heart's content and even um, audio demos to, to match the genre that you're going to pick. It's all here, all the settings. If you're a gamer, you're, you're in paradise for settings because everyone knows that if you're not winning, it's never you, it's the equipment, right? <laughs> okay. Now, uh, follow me to WebOS now. I'm going to use for something to say, okay. follow me to WebOS. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, um, I guess you could call that a game changer feature. I'm going to release a joke book soon. Yeah, I'll sign copies. Um, yeah, yeah. Now the um, the WebOS um, is obviously a big part of everyone's life. Um, if you buy an LG TV, um, we've brought it out since 2014. It gives you all your favorite smart TV apps. Um, and in the last few years, we've been adding in um, through the power of AI and recommendation, um, all extra access to content and titles um, to your heart's content. But you know, in some areas where your internet isn't really quick, um, the recommendation was a little bit too hard to load. So we streamlined it this year, and I believe we've actually got it right, um, truly. And so we've just got two screens. We've got the landing page with the top 12 apps, You've got cards that cluster content by genre. So just my gaming apps are here. Twitch, YouTube, GeForce Now. I've also got my home office function so I can access the, the Google productivity suite or my Microsoft 365 features. I can also access messenger rooms and remote meeting. So that can be really handy because it was only a matter of time before Chromebook features came to every screen on the market. Okay, and of course, music apps, which is a big part. I think someone, I think Tegan, you said, can you just stream music to your TV? No, no, I was asking specifically with uh, TV of when no. it's up, if uh, you could still stream it natively or if you had to cast. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, well, it's important because you don't always want the screen on, you just want to play the music to it. Um, so you've got access to all those apps um, that it will spring your content straight across. Do the Apple Music, Amazon Music, and the titles on there support AdPods directly to it, or will they ignore it? 
Okay. You're going to rely on <laughs> asking a question that nobody knows the answer to. Amazon, no. That's okay. limited to Fire Stick. Okay. okay. I know Amazon supports that, uh, supports um, Atmos to earphones in this country. Yeah, I think they're still getting it, yep. fully expanding it. Um, Apple Music, yes. So uh, Atmos will work on that instant. In yeah, version? and Tidal, yes. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, I'm not saying I prefer one or the other. No, no, of course, of, uh, right. I'm, just, I'm just surprised. all agree it's time for Spotify to go hi-fi, right? Oh yeah, totally. But I'm just surprised because <laughs> nobody else has announced that Atmos works from Apple Music to any other device. That's why I'm curious about ah. that. Keep it a secret. Okay, now that recommended content um, is along this bar. Yep. And that's based on what you've clicked through in the past. You know, so it's working on its best to give you recommended content. And then you've got the top titles from these streaming apps here. So overall, simple, organized, recommendations, all your favorite apps, including gaming, streaming, sports. And if you want more, they're all in the app store right here. Overall, I believe the WebOS this year 23 um, is super clean, very functional, and uh, it's gonna be popular. Now you probably see LD channels up there. It's a brand new part of our menu that accesses um, a whole bunch of um, like cable TV channels. But something I really want to show you how Disney Plus has recently upgraded on our TVs. So if you are in the Disney Plus app, you've all seen more and more titles with now streaming in IMAX enhanced or enhanced. And that means that in certain scenes, they used IMAX cameras. Who's ever seen an IMAX camera? How, how big it's are huge. they? Would you say they're probably this big? Yeah. 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 In fact, it's you, you, yeah, it's ridiculous. I think they run a film too, don't they? They yeah, run film. Seventy mil. Seventy mil. Go and look at some of the making of them and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Really? Oh, that's exciting. Now, in oh, I didn't even realize that some scenes have used it for the animated scenes as well. So, when you're in the Disney Plus app now, and this goes back to 2019 models. You've got the option to watch the IMAX enhanced version or the 16 by 9. And uh, you guys know IMAX. Um, Joe, IMAX enhanced is a larger, taller image, whereas 16 by 9 is going to crop off. You can't see her gloves or the rest of the scene in that shot. So it obviously looks a lot more immersive. But that's, I mean, I can't wait to watch more and more of these in this IMAX. Is probably a weird question because a lot of people don't talk about IMAX enhanced which is really cool that you are, does it support the IMAX Enhanced DTS track. Okay, so that's expected to go online in July. Will the TV support it? Yeah, so our Alpha 9 Gen 6 have DTS um, I'm playback. I'm surprised you haven't answered this. This is amazing to me. This is surreal. Yeah, so it means you can pass it through for all the Alpha 7s and Alpha 5s. Yeah. Um, it'll play the Dolby Atmos or Dolby Digital version. Yeah, okay. Because that's there are nice. other versions IMAX Enhanced, oh, come back to me. There's not a lot of difference between the tracks, but IMAX Enhanced is two layers. So, yeah, so like, cool. there is so many versions, yeah. and then you'll be a version with DTS. Great. Right. And that will be the default version if you can do DTS. Cool. Great. Awesome. Let's look at the C series and the B series and the G series. So follow me, guys. Now this should be really easy as you're standing right here. I want you to quickly compare these two TVs and, and find two or three differences between the two. And it's not a trick question. More fiber on the right. Mm. Great, gold star. Blacks are very different. Mm. Okay, good. Unfortunately, a bit dark, but the bezels are actually much thinner mm. on the right side. And there's a, on that little LED sign at the top, there's three letters that telling you what to say. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, I probably wouldn't go, oh, I can just tell that's an Evo panel, but the bezel is a dead giveaway. Um, now, B series is a first step in our OLED range, and it's going to be a catalyst from mini LED up into OLED. It's available in three sizes 55, 65, 77. We know we're going to sell a lot. But we want people to know that the Evo C series which is Australia's most popular TV from week to week, in many weeks, um, has you know, significant differences. Brighter whites, thinner bezel, our, our most advanced um, processing, so the detail in the C series and the colors should be more vibrant. You can see here how much of that detail is just 
lost. The magenta is not as intense on the B because it's not an Evo panel there. Look at that magenta, it's really powerful. Is it a processing issue or a panel issue? Ah, oh, no, the B series just doesn't have the headroom, the brightness of the C series. So we're just tapping around 800 nits, whereas the C series is about 20% brighter than a B. And you, you can really notice that when you're putting on full screen wide, white highlights, it really makes a difference. Yeah, cool. Is that 20% brighter, full time 20% brighter, or is it, does it boost it dynamically based on content white? Uh, we actually measure that on full screen white. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Which so it's not something where the AI process is looking at and going, oh, we should probably up our game a little bit the brightness of the process. Um, we oh, do that. Display, we do that on the G. Okay. Actually, huh. we'll do that stuff next. But yeah, even in the the, the tone of white mm. on the C series is a more white white, which is harder to do. But thanks to the WRGB pixel, we can do that fairly easily. Yeah. But still, I mean, we and I certainly agree. C series has been such a hero model for us. But the B is such a great TV. If it wasn't for the C beside it, you'd all be going, wow, it looks fantastic. Mm. And as Thomas has said, it really is our entry point into OLED. And one of our strategies, um, you know, we've had a lot of success in the 10 years. We've sold more and more OLED to more and more Australians, more sizes, more models. We want to get more people into OLED with B series and then hopefully take them on that journey over the years up into C's and even up to G's. So you could say B's good, C is better, and then uh, G will be the best. I think that when people, like, I know, I've, I've had readers talk to me about this, that when they've experienced OLED, it's very difficult for them to switch to another TV yeah. because of what they've experienced by seeing the visuals from it. 100%, and I've said a couple of times today, if I could get every person in Australia to go into a store, into a room like this and stand here and go, oh my God, that is an OLED screen. That is just, I mean, you, you guys are all, to be honest, like everyone today, just mesmerized by the picture and you know they're, they're pretty obscure movie or scenes in some of them but it's just mesmerizing to see the color the brightness and things like that and when you look up the end at those panels up there which are L L lg panels but they're lcd um, screens you can see the grayness mm. of them compared to that perfect black where it's coming up on the on the the bars you just yeah it's very hard to go back to led lcd well, speaking of there's uh, one more thing. We're going to move to the G series. Um, so we've got the 83C, which Josh, that's around 900. 83T. Yep. And then we've got the G series. And again, I'm not going to prompt you. I just want to see what you can see a difference between. Sorry, what's the channel? It's an 83C and a 77G. Yep. Yeah. 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 They're both amazing. They're both yeah, amazing. they're both really solid. Mm. Again, you can see the different, like, vibrant, and it feels, it feels sharp. Even the blacks feel just that little bit more. You can just wider. see it even in there, the white yeah. is, is wider. Just that little bit. It's a really good test between both of them. It's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Now, the G yeah. is uh, it's taking Evo to the next level. So while they have um, both OLED panels, the G series uses what we call light control architecture, which is a complicated name of saying um, a whole range of features. So it's it's using all the potential brightness of the screen. So it's looking at areas where it's not using the brightness and reallocating power to where it needs to. And that results in brighter whites and you know sensation sparkling HDR experience. And you're really noticing the difference off the back of um, the heat sink, which allows it to go harder and release that heat from the back of the screen, as well as something we call MLA, micro lens array. But basically, you know, we put a lens on our eyes and it makes our eyes worse or better? Better. Better, yeah. So we found a way to put a lens on a TV and make the picture better. And this TV has a special layer with lenses and across this entire screen, there is 42 billion lenses, <laughs> which you can count. If you have a microscope, you can see it when you look at the pixels up close. But 42 billion, 6,000 per pixel. And we're using that lens to 
stop light from escaping out to the edges between the layers of the panel. We're sharpening it up and we're sending it directly to where people watch. And the result is higher brightness without higher energy consumption. And that's why you get this terrific, sensational bright white highlights that make the G really pop. And that's why it's become the TV to beat because I don't want to mention numbers, but at its um, brightest point, the G3 can hit 2,100 nits peak brightness, which is amazing. So 70% brighter than our B series. And the C is 20%. That's this year's B series. This year's B series, yeah. yeah. It's going to put on uh, Yeah, absolutely. So the brightness arc architecture of the stack you guys are using for this is not it's not technically hardware or software it's basically optical and um, I, I think you just asked that when Thomas stuck away but I <laughs> think it's a combination of many things like uh, Thomas said the heat sink the processor and the algorithm is also tuned is, up as well is the processor and algorithm doing something similar to I guess like matrix style like monitoring on, on camera where it monitors everything on the scene and tries to balance the light accordingly um, we're actually analyzing the scene in 20,000 individual yeah. areas okay and to best use all the power and, and potential of the panel um, and it's you know it's all and, and that's software. a step up because i remember these numbers it's a step up from five thousand in the previous year yeah, so we've okay. got twenty thousand versus five thousand previously so more areas of that picture are being reviewed by the processor and you know foreground or background uh, enhanced upscale or all the things the processor does to make the picture better for 5,000 the previous generation? 5,000 is the C, the two models that last year's made. Yeah. Yeah, so I, mean, this, I picked this white scene specifically uh, because that's basically flexing the maximum amount you can get out of the screen. White is all the pixels running together and we utilize, or we lean on that white subpixel to take it to the next level. And we get this like sensational picture. I would say that this uh, G3 is brighter than a lot of mini LED TVs out there and it's amazing and I'm so excited that we're launching this technology in our 10th year because it shows if we could put it next to an OLED 10 years ago mm -hmm. how far we've come and it tells me how far we will be in another 10 years. Also answers the question I guess most people normally have with LED backlits which is will it survive in a room of bright light and if it can survive next to an LED backlit? The answer is damn yes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's. I mean, that you know, that has been a question around for OLED. I mean, to be mm. honest, I, I, I don't think that's been a, a weakness over the last two to mm. three years. I think that everyone who watches these TVs looks at the image, and I think that's another thing to, to talk about. I've said it in the previous groups. We've made the brightness better. You know, we're 70% brighter than that base model. But it's not just about one dimension, right? The color saturation on the screen is better as well. The, you know, the, the tone mapping where mm. it's 20,000 versus 5,000. The process is stronger. The heat sink is stronger. It's, you, you don't buy a car, like you don't buy a Ferrari and then chuck a supercharger in it to go even faster down a straight line because it wrecks the handling it's performance. It's a yeah. complete system. Yeah. Complete package. And that's what... You know, and, and I'm saying this because I've seen all the um, information and we've heard the presentations from Korea. Our engineers are going for the ultra realistic picture quality, not over bright, not over saturated, but super realistic. Um, and I think this sort of content actually delivers what, what they've been trying to achieve. Possibly a weird deviation of the question. Is it 20,000 areas in this one? Is that on every panel or just the really, really large one? Again, I'd have to divert to Thomas. Is it that vary by size? Twenty thousand zones across um, any size. Across any across any Evo model or any Evo G series rather. Yeah. Okay, so regardless of fifty five or that size. Yeah, and okay. we need to do that because we've got so much potential in the panel. It allows us to go to that granular level. Yeah. And really uh, leverage it all. And why didn't you have a ten year old panel here to show us the difference? They didn't know where the phone flex was. That's been the same thing. Because I wouldn't bring mine in. No, I haven't. Right. Yeah. I look, I mean, it's an idea. Maybe uh, we'll, uh, do it for next year. We've talked about it. And yeah, yeah, an idea potentially we could still bring out in terms of marketing to put a 10-year-old OLED yeah, versus a, a 2023. Sure. It might be an interesting comparison. Or even six years ago, I think yeah. the step change just gets bigger and bigger as we go. Take the one from my living room, that's fine. From where? Take the one from my living room. Okay. We'll see about swapping that for a brand new Sounds one. Sounds good, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, guys, hopefully you can see 
the step change and you know like I kind of said in the beginning 2023 all about celebration of mm. 10 years of OLED for us um, we haven't been sitting still during that 10 year period we've been going harder and harder and harder and very proud and we're getting over we're seeing overseas reviews already that just uh, to be honest are gushing about the G3 and it's fantastic for us we've got competition in this market so welcome to the table guys um, but that's our latest offering so see if you can see if you can beat that mm. one last surprise here we we'll talk about this one the big TV at the end of the room so this is the first time in Australia you guys or anyone gets to see the new 2023 OLED M series TV so this is 97 inches Jeez. it's the same G3 panel that you have right there on the wall but running 97 inches and as I think you may be aware it's a wireless TV so what does that mean well uh, my lovely assistant Thomas is demonstrating the box you've got effectively we've taken all the brains the tuner the processor all that tech stuff that i don't completely understand and we put it in a little box and why have we done that well basically we want to give people the freedom to put the screen the tv screen anywhere they want in their living room so some of the limitations with the tv is you have to be somewhere near an aerial if you're putting free to wear in it um, you also might be plugging an xbox or a playstation into it and you kind of have to have the TV cabinet underneath or at least somewhere near it to connect all those devices. We want the screen to be the hero. So with that box, as long as you're within 10 meters of the same room and the aerial device, which Thomas is gonna just twist a bit, is pointed at the TV receiver, oh. you can stream 4K, 120 hertz vision so th this box here is doing the hard work we just put it here because there's no power points in the middle of the room here and that aerial is actually pointing that way but it's it's picking up this receiver here so if you had the box over here plugged in and pointing the signal it would be okay if your cat or your dog or your kids run past it it's okay because it kind of bounces around the room with this proprietary technology that headquarters guys have created I will say though, if you build a brick wall in front of it, or you go and put it in three rooms over, it's not going to work, guys. So it has to be line, line, of line of sight, and it can handle, you know, momentarily momentary breaks of the signal. But stand in front of it. When well, we've been playing around with it, but um, stand in front of it and it stops. But the point is the freedom to put your screen anywhere you want. What happens if someone stands up and walks in front of it? Does it break the signal? No, no. We so we've seen that at uh, CES, they had it in a in a suite, and there they did have a PowerPoint in the middle of the room, and it was kind of like here. Yeah. And the tour groups, like you guys, would walk past. I mean, like I said, if like four or five of you stood in front of it You'd for like it. Yeah. ten seconds, maybe fifteen seconds, it would stop. But it's actually the reason they've been working on it for a number of years is this proprietary wireless technology that effectively bounces and, and finds a way to get the signal to the TV. Um, so it's not, uh, it, it's, a, it's not breakable in most situations. Is there a way to connect it physically if you wanted to? Um, no, I don't think there is, no. 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 Uh, if you wanted that. Oh, yeah, yes, there is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that brings us to the last point. Um, the M3 will be available in the 65, 77, no, no, 65. Sorry. 77, 83, <laughs> 83 and 97. 97 inch, yeah. which is 2.5 meters diagonally. It's as big yep. as some walls. <laughs> and uh, in terms of the price between a G3 and an M3, uh, we're only asking for a $1,000. Yeah, yeah $1,000 price more for the M3 version. Yeah. But it has the G3 panel and picture quality. So you're just paying so an extra thousand. A thousand on top of that G3, yeah. approximately. So rough price, we haven't finalized anything yet. And looking highly likely to come to Australia in the second half of this year. Um, again, it's a TV, not for everybody. Yeah. Not everybody needs a wireless TV, but 77 inches of size with only a thousand dollar premium over that G3 for again, kind of that design story, flexibility of going, okay, I'm going to put it at the back of my room with all the other consoles and maybe even hide them in a, in a, t in a cabinet at the back and just have... It actually looks better 
wall mounted. We, we literally got this into the country about 72 hours ago. It was it was actually carried upstairs to here because it couldn't even fit in the lift. So, um, yeah, it's, we've set it up as quickly as we can. So um, the screen itself still needs power. Exactly. Yeah. This uh, come and have a look to see that there's no tricks. That the screen is running a power cable out the back here. There's no USB sticks plugged in. There's no HDMI plugged in. And then the, the power of the, the box is, is running to some power board or something out there. Mm. So mm. be willing to find our magic. This is one of the first instances I've seen OLED used as a replacement for like a complete projector system. It is and almost. It, it is makes, almost it makes it yeah, yeah. But I still don't really understand how people watch that projected image in there. I suppose oh, to get I, the I, size. I, I do it out the back every week. We do it for our daughters. Yeah, I suppose outside makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, oh, where well, you don't want to put, put a expensive TV, but in in your house. Oh, there are a lot of people that build and the city awards are known for. Obviously, a lot of people that build the extra room just so they can have it all enclosed and feel less like a TV and more like a cinema. Yeah. So I can understand the projector, and I understand this as a replacement. This is kind of like yeah. your personal version of those LG and Samsung cinema screens that exist. Uh, indeed, but I was talking to Josh about this earlier in our boardroom at work. We've got an old, terrible projector, and he's telling me that they've got a new one in there that's that's light years ahead. But even the very best projector to me doesn't beat the picture quality. But they're less expensive and that's usually the point. For sure, for sure. And like I said, not everyone's going to be able to afford that, unfortunately, but we were very pleasantly surprised at CES to find out it's only roughly, we, we have to set it mm. finally, $1,000 on top of that for the freedom of putting that box in your home. So. Well, that supports 4K, you can't handle an 8K stream at all, or is it? Is I don't think so, yeah. It's okay. 4K, 120 hertz. You're not happy with that? No, I'm, 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 I'm fine. I actually yeah. think 4K, I don't think 8K is hugely necessary for most people because there's no yeah. media in it. But yeah. when you spend that much on a TV, it's a, it's a very good question to ask. Well, no, it, it is actually a good question because we do make a couple of 8K models. You, you very limited. Yeah. I saw them a couple of years ago when I was at CES. Oh, yeah, when, and we've, we've got yeah. a few coming this year, um, mostly online, listing only because of the popularity. It's just not their 8K popularity. Mm. But the theory is that the processor and stuff is here, um, maybe it could be an 8K panel that it's pushed to, I'm sure. It's not the resolution of the screen that would make a difference, so maybe just cost prohibitive to do that. This is probably a weird question, obviously this question, you probably can't answer because it's very future focused, but yep. when external sort of boxes like this first started coming out, and it sounds like a whole version of this for its mm -hmm. first um, 4K TVs back way back in the day, we could upgrade the box. Do we expect oh, that box yeah. to be upgraded where you keep the TV? Ah, uh, well, that's a good question that came up in the last group. I, I don't know the answer, but theoretically, if the op and this goes back to the operating system yeah. challenge, that if the brains and the operating system are in that box, and you've spent the money and the outlay on this fantastic 4K screen that's pretty good and you know will re realistically last five six years, yeah. maybe it will be a thousand bucks to upgrade. Your yeah. box, I, like that. That's just that's speculation. Okay. Don't expect this question next year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I, I mean, I, seriously, I, I will ask the guys in Korea that point, and I think it, it's a very relevant um, question to ask them. Yeah. Uh, are we going to be able to upgrade the box? I'll make sure um, Alex asks instead of me. That way, it's coming from I'll, two I'll people. I get someone else to volunteer. <laughs> <long laughs> so oh, the joke oh, is they ask. Okay. 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 That's good. Okay. 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 Just, just yeah. for variation. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's got to be three of us. Bless you for inviting me back. Twenty twenty four. Exactly. No, I'm sorry, I'm still going to update And so that thousand dollar, that thousand dollar difference is that US or Australia? Because you said it at CES. Oh, possibly US. Yeah. Possibly. US. But it's still that would only be thirteen or fourteen hundred. Yeah. So it's not that much. Yeah. Uh, not not the eighty hundred grand that we kind of expected that it might be, or I, might, or I feared it might be. So yeah, guys, this is Australia's first wireless TV, and um, this has been. 10 years of OLED innovation, demonstrating what we can do for the 2023 range. I have a question for someone that's not here. The OLED R, does that get in, in does that see the, the, the new Evo style panels imparted to it, or does it just use all the technology? Uh, o, OLED R, we, we are not planning to continue bringing it in, okay. basically. So it was very much a futuristic, what can we do with OLED technology? We sold a couple, 
but the price premium that you got that you paid for a 65 inch yeah. 4k OLED well, screen it's, it's a really specific device it was a really <laughs> specific market so we showed you what you could do with OLED um, and it was always kind of a push the limits um, product as opposed to this one where we really do think this is a commercially viable product in the future so yeah the sad news is we are going to be discontinuing that one okay. goes the way of the wallpaper tv and the lg flex phone that we're not talking about. and the lg flex phone that we're not talking about. and the lg rollable phone that we're discontinuing i know right god we're innovative sometimes we sometimes we don't get it 100 percent right but but it's actually what innovative companies do do you know bang and allison is taking evo panels in the, in the news or is that a very old Bino, one? Uh, the from LG display. No, well, B&O integrates yes. LG panels into its in, into its Great. TV, mm, so I'm yep. curious if its OLEDs are getting either, or if it's just LG. When they, they'll be buying the new panels to go in. Okay. Yep. See, everyone here is had an answer to one of my questions today. It's really surprising. <laughs> it's, it's good. See, we are, we are educated. Or They're on the ball. There are so many of them here. That's right. Play. That's, <laughs> that's the best joke you've made today. Do you want to put that in Thomas's tech joke book? Okay, guys, well, yeah, that is the wrap up to our show. Thank you so much. Like I said in the beginning, we do appreciate I, I, Despite the hard questions, we do love um, seeing you guys every year because, yeah, it's important to ask these questions on the technology. So, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas.